right now, as I understand it, your oil sands industry emits something like 70 megatons of uh, greenhouse gas emissions per year, and you've set the cap at 100 megatons. In the context of the Paris Agreement and the global decarbonization plan that is now out there, Alberta, far from being a key player, is actually giving license for an expansion, a major expansion of emissions. Well, I'm not sure I would characterize it as, an, as a major ex expansion, but, but what, what I would... But what can you quarrel with in what I've just said? Um, I think what I would quarrel with is that we're the first place to, uh, to, uh, to put a cap on emissions. But you've we put are the it, first respect, place in put, Canada. You've put on a cap which the big oil companies, and goodness knows, here we are sitting in Calgary with all these fine, huge skyscraper offices of big oil, and they love it. They're really happy with you, which suggests to me that you haven't been very tough on them. You know, the other folks who stood on that stage to announce the cap was uh, Environmental Defence, uh, was uh, Forest Ethics, now called Stand. Uh, one of Canada's uh, uh, loudest environmental voices, Support Berman, who has led many, many uh, 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 highly con uh, conflictual environmental campaigns, uh, and the Pemina Institute, who have been a long-standing environmental voice here in Alberta. So, uh, in addition, uh, Indigenous peoples stood with us on that stage that day. The rest of the country is going to have to squeeze its emissions in a completely unrealistic fashion. The Parkland Institute, they said, if, if you go up here in Alberta to the 100 megaton limit, and if British Columbia builds the new gas terminals that it's talking about, it would be, and I'm quoting them, it would be impossible for Canada as a whole to reduce other emissions sufficiently to meet the 2030 Paris targets that Pr Premier Trudeau has signed up to. Well, there's a number of hypotheticals and a number of uh, uh, ways in which we haven't taken into, into account the fact that we're phasing out coal, the fact that we're taking no, a massive respect, amount they have of taken uh, that into account. They're just uh, looking at the, reductions just, in methane, they're, for example. Well, no, I mean, but, they, they have, they're a very respected institute. They have looked at that. You know, Alberta's uh, uh, climate plan, if, if everyone were to adopt it, uh, uh, the entire globe would be uh, reaching its Paris targets. It's well, extremely... Well, I, I don't think that can be true. Uh, I mean, well, that it's, cannot be true. Well, Alberta, it, Alberta is producing some of the dirtiest oil in the world. If everyone were like Alberta, the world would be going to hell in a handcart. In this, you know, sort of short to medium term, 20% uh, of Canadian GDP relies on, on Alberta's oil and gas oh, industry. Well, that's the key that's phrase though, isn't it? Short, not short small. term. That is uh, short term. And, and it's also medium term. You know, we, we know that... So you're saying uh, Canada's stuck? You know, I don't know if, if the word stuck is the word I would use. I, I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity there to add value to those resources, to find different ways of using them.